Looks like my earphone is not connected. So just bear with me here one moment while I try and connect it here. So hang on. Maybe you can hear me anyway. Just let me know if you can. Um, but I, I like to get it done here in my earpiece. So let me know if you can hear me or not. Um, let me go ahead and re, redo it. It may just have inadvertently shut off. I think you can. There we go. All right. Let's hope that everything is uh, good and connected and that we are ready to go. Well, it is Wednesday, November 17th, and it is time for Bead Shop Live. I'm Kate Richburg, and we're going to be doing a really fun um, project, I guess, today, the water garden bracelet. Um, and the water garden is uh, something that started with Ali Mori, and we've done some interpretations on it. So I hope that you guys will, will like it. So uh, thanks for bearing with me. Hopefully uh, everything will be good. If it's not clear or whatever, everything's strong on my end. So if you're having any issues, jump out of the broadcast and jump back in and uh, you should uh, be able to see me. And also make sure that you're connected to your Wi-Fi and not your data. You can also jump out of the broadcast on Facebook and sometimes go over to our YouTube channel. That sometimes helps as well. So um, I've got a strong signal here, which bodes well for our broadcast. So let me just say thank you, everyone. I am in my off-site remote location today. If you've been watching me broadcast from my home studio, the, the big home studio is getting worked on. So this is like the annex studio here. I'm in my uh, creative room, my sewing room here. And you can see I've got a uh, let me point that way. My sewing machine's there. I've got my uh, my chair behind my shoulder right here. This rocking chair has been in my family forever. My grand rocked me in it when I was a little baby, and I still have it. Um, some my uh, chicken playing tic tac toe quilt from my dear friend Janet Losey. Some other things that I find comforting and familiar. So I'm starting to get moved in. Uh, so it's it's great to have to have everything uh, coming along. So uh, as I said, today we're going to be working on this water garden project. But before I get there, I just want to make sure that all you all um, know where to find us. Some of you have been watching us for the five years that we've been broadcasting, been doing this, and some of you are fairly new to this broadcast. So let me just say that you can follow us at beadshop.com uh, on Instagram, at the bead table on Facebook, 
you can join us there. And of course, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel right at beadshop.com, whether you're watching us live or watching us on replay. And what I'm going to be showing you today, you can go to beadshop.com for information on, let me do this one, that's better, um, the information on the project and products from today's broadcast right on our website. Also, sign up for our newsletter for the latest discounts, giveaways, and new products because we always have new things, shiny new toys, as Janice and I like to say. Uh, for you guys to see um, new beads, new techniques, all kinds of new stuff. So um, that's happening. And speaking of new, you guys, let me get over here so I can see all of your comments. Great. Oh, good. Everybody's seeing me and everybody's, Kim, you've got cheese and crackers. I need cheese and crackers. I need to go over to the to the fridge. We'll just take a little walk, go over my, my whole house, right? And, and uh, see what's happening. It's not ready for public viewing. This room is pretty good, but we've still got a lot of boxes to unpack, but we're getting there slowly. Um, okay. So uh, good. All right. Great. It's so great to have everybody here. I'm just going through um, and seeing everybody's stuff. Gita, I will try and get Alfie in. He's outside, so I've shut off this part of the house. All of these rooms are in one part, and then the other part rooms are in the other part. And so Alfie is right by the door uh, waiting for Chris. So we'll see. Maybe he'll come in. Um, so we'll see what's happening. But, um, oh, there he is. Look at him. Thank you, Chris. Here's this big boy. Look, there he is. I promised you, Alfred. Tea pickles. And there he is. Alfie, can you see everybody? This boy, yeah, look at, yeah, he's working the camera. There he is. He's a big 25, 25 pounds, this boy. You guys remember when he was such a little baby, and now he's a nice, a nice big boy. There he is. I know. Alfie is. Alfie's huge. Our boy. I know, baby. Look at they're so happy to see you. Well, I could do this whole broadcast with just Alfred and I, but I guess he says, just hold me, mama. Just hold me all day. All right. So there, uh, there you go. Oh my goodness. That's a lot of, that's a workout with Alfred. Okay, let's get to the new beads, shall we? These Wednesday broadcasts at my house are going to be, I think, kind of wacky for a while until I get settled in. You know, in the garage, we're going to be putting in like a studio space and a, what I call a studio and stuff. So we'll be, this is all going to be, um, uh, take a little while to get back into back into uh, the groove. But thank you so much, you guys, for sticking with me. So speaking of new, let's start with, uh, let me get this camera into view here. And I will, you can see, see how I do this with this. So let's go right here. And I'll show you some of these um, I'm still getting the hang of getting this camera exactly where I want to it to be. So there we go. Not too bad. Yeah, all the cats are doing well. You know, they all are. Florence likes to live right on my chair on a heating pad. And little Oliver is all about the, the windows and stuff. So everybody is so happy. And But Alfred especially is lording it over. He loves it. So before we get to the water garden project, and I'll show you this uh, just real quick here. You'll remember the water garden, this is Allie's original, okay, right here, if you'll remember that. Um, she used the drops, and I was so in love with how these drops looked that I made um, uh, my version of it. That one's called Bejeweled, and they're all in uh, over on beadshop.com under water garden in, in the bracelets project section. So I'm going to be doing kind of a hybrid of both of these today. 
Um, and I'll show you what I'm going to use in just a second. But I wanted to show, I know that you guys kind of like when I do a deep dive into um, the new product that we have. And the lighting's not too bad. I'll work out some more lighting. It's again, it's always a work in progress, but this actually isn't too bad. I'm going to trim some of these long um, strands here, these long threads, um, as I share with you. These are some new check glass. So I went shopping for check glass, I don't know, maybe a month or a little bit more ago. Um, and I thought that, and that's really what prompted me doing this project because check glass is perfect for this water garden. And I'm gonna teach you, I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do it. And I really want you to create and riff and play around with what you like to as well for this. Um, okay, so here, are the new uh, the new check glass. So what we've got, let me make some sense out of this. So we've got some six millimeters here, okay? Alfred seems to like these, doing a little bit of meowing, meowing for Chris. He cannot be away from, from Chris 24 seven. Um, I've got some drops. These drops are so great, aren't they good? They're the, there's this mat with this etched gold on the top, I love them. And then we've got three large rondelles, eight millimeter rondelles, which are gorge. Um, also that etched color. And I've got some five millimeter rondelles here. They're all in the just in section. Some four millimeter fire polish here. A couple of English cuts. You guys know that the English cuts, how I so vintage, how I love them. I love them all so much. And oh, here's the other drop. Here's that other drop. So there are three drops. Now, when I ordered, okay, so sometimes like you, right, when you order on Bead Shop, and we have the sizes, right? We have the sizes there for everyone to see. And but you still, when you get your order, you get your order and you're like, wait, what happened? How come these beads are either A, so big or so small, or I wasn't paying attention to the size? Well, that's what happened on these rollers, okay? Our regular rollers are this size <laughs> right here. So can you see how this really is? a jumbo roller. So this roller that we have here, it's eight and a half millimeters by a little over five, right? And the whole size is a little bigger than three millimeter, okay? This is our regular roller. Now the giant rollers that we got, you can tell Alfred loves these rollers. The jumbo roller is cool. You know, I'm not mad about it. I'm actually really okay. The interior hole is 4.6 millimeter, okay? And it is a 12, almost 13 millimeter. Hole to hole is about seven and a half millimeter. So I'm in love with them. and. As you know, these are coming down the pike. We're going to be doing some of these leather stacker bracelets like this, right? Where the, the, the pieces are almost here. And I promise we're going to be making these guys. We're going to be getting, this is a little preview. I'm talking out of, out of turn here, talking out of school. Um, this um, really beautiful woven cotton cord we're going to be getting this in this and we're getting it in a bunch of different colors these aren't the perfect color for it though actually it doesn't look too bad um these would look great as sliders on two millimeter cord especially on the bangles so there's a lot you can do with this and i'm going to play around with these as well but they'll look great as sliders they're great as ending beads when you want to get all of your beads together you know um and and put them in um 
you know, you want to get all your strands in a large hold bead, this is a good one. So I'm pretty happy with them. It's a matte, they're gold lined, they look super rich and expensive and delicious. I just love them. So anyway, so that's what's going on. That's why we have exactly one jumbo roller. Though I'm going to get some more in because again, as I say, I'm not mad at it. I'm pretty happy that it came in. So maybe I just ordered it subconsciously, you know, who knows. So that's all of these guys. So um, these are the new ones. So you can find them right now if you're watching us live or thereabouts. You can find them in our Just In section. And then you can find them as they are less of a brand new bead and more of a bead that we just carry in our stock. You'll be able to find them under our check glass bead section. Okay. So here uh, is what I'm going to be using today. So let's take a look at the project here. And this is the one that I made that um, bejeweled, okay? And you can see what I'm using is I'm using drops. I'm using um, Czech uh, English cuts. I'm using um, seed beads, dot seed beads. I, you can use, I'm going to use regular Ceylon here with what I've got going on, but you can also use the fine Ceylon as well. I'm also using some rollers like in the side right here on this side. No, this side, you can see the rollers right there on the, on the photo. Um, so there's a real kind of melange, I guess, of whatever you want to use. So here are my choices. Now I used these new amber with the with the silver wash on the top, which are really beautiful. And then I used these, the new um, fire polish there in the center, and then this kind of purple bronze, they call it that 10 millimeter. You can see in the project over here how I used both the 10 millimeter and the eight millimeter. We do have that brand new eight millimeter that would fall really nicely into this. So if you wanna add this one in, because I used this, um, it's the 8-1889. This gold luster, really pretty ADOT seed bead. Um, that's going to kind of be my base. And I also, you know, I grabbed these two kind of green, milky, opaque leaves on my way out. They're not in the project listing, but I saw them sitting here on my desk. And this is called Maple Grove, right? So this is the maple leaf, some of the maple leaf glass beads we have. So I grabbed them. I want to show you how I might incorporate them. I have this leaf, this tiara cast leaf, I'm also going to add in. Now, necessity is the mother of invention, right? And I kind of like that because I realized I don't have any beading needles here at home, um, which isn't a problem. But I also don't have any head pins. I have some silver ones, but I think I want to, would want to use brass. I could simply just wire wrap these and make a little charm, but I'm going to show you what else I might do with this. Okay. So, um, so bear with me, uh, on this cause I have something kind of brewing. So what I did was I got my velvet pad right here and I laid out my beads. You can see that there. And um, I laid them out in kind of little sections. So I've got my English cut here. I think I want a six millimeter around it. I've got the three drops for both sides um, and an English cut in the middle of those one drop flanked by the two six millimeters 
And then I repeat this pattern over here. Oops, I'm missing one of my drops. There we go. And then I just repeat this pattern here. That's those guys. So this one, this one, and now this one. There we go. I like to lay everything out and make sure that I have enough beads. Because if you're doing this all the way around like, um, like Allie did, let me show you this one again. She, this style with all the drops takes two strands of the drops, but I have one strand here. And so I want a little more space in between what I'm doing. Okay. So what I used is I used this full circle button. You can see that there. And I cut two, two yard lengths of the gold regular Ceylon. I know, shocker, I have no beading needles at home. I mean, I'm sure I have them somewhere. I just probably haven't unpacked them yet. But we don't need beading needles because what I did was I started here with my, um, move all of this over. Whoops, I don't want to drop my beads. It's funny getting used to working in a new spot isn't it? I don't know about you, but I'll have this down soon <laughs> where my camera angle is and stuff. There we go. There we are. So I cut two, two yard lengths of the regular Ceylon. And then I put all four strands through the shank of my button right there. And I isolated the two strands here that I'm macrame with and then my two strands which are my base okay so there's that so oh this was a oh anita this made my day thank you because i feel like i'm so fumbly i give you insight design and forces your own creativity thank you well you rock right back thank you my friend thank you it's really nice of you to say um, so I've done my flat macrame here, right? And so I've come in and I'll just do my last one. You can see I'll do my square knot, come around. We've got a really good um, tutorial on bead shop for these this basic flat macrame. You've seen me do it a million gajillion times, right? And uh, let me tell you how many, how many I have. I've got my fancy all here that I use for sewing. I don't even have my other all. So I've got this one, my, my little sewing all. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So I'll do, I guess I'll do 12 knots. So it really clears my button, okay, just like so. So now um, I'm ready for my first section. And so my um, English cut is going to go on. And I'm going to have my six millimeters around. And then I'm going to have some A dots here, okay like this. So I'm just going to jump in and see what it looks like. So first, I'm going to grab my threads. I undid this center strand. I've got it clipped with my clamper. I put those two strands through like so, slide them up, and then clamp again. You guys will see here. I've clamped it again so that this is nice and taut here. And I'm trying to keep these threads laying side by side. Okay. So now this slides up and this bead is going to go along the outside. So I'm going to try, what did my old one use? Let me look at 
Let me look at it and see. So I started this one, you can see I did an eight millimeter and I just did, it looks like two, four, six of the eight millimeters around. You can see this next one though, this is kind of what I'm going for. So maybe, though I'm not gonna do a drop here and here. So I think I'm gonna start with two um, A dots. And what I've done is I've stiffened the ends of these guys with some zap glue. So I don't need a needle. So one and two. I'm going to cut this at an angle to angle cut. So it's nice and clean. I'll get my six mil and then two more here. One and two. Now I wanted this to be all kind of a monochromatic palette. I don't, I don't know why. I did, but I did. Um, and so, but you could change up the thread color on this too, right? To add a little bit more color. So you can see here how this is a little off. So I actually need three A dots here. Let me go back to the comments so I can see it here. Okay. Yes, this is this is my um it's not peyote with a twist. This is my great bead extravaganza um demo. Um this is and I need to do it here too. This is the round peyote, right? Like this. Um peyote with a twist is also kind of fun, and I've been threatening for about three years to show you guys how to do it. And as soon as I find my sample, because I've got a great sample uh for you guys, but you can see this uh it's kind of fun. So they're kind of luscious and deluxe and delicious. Um, you guys are talking about, <laughs> I love how you guys are, I don't know, talking about, I love how just there's so much discussion that happens in the chat in these. It really is kind of like, you know, we're getting together around the water cooler from all over the world. Of course, Janice is back east. I'm here on the west. I want to say west coast, but I'm actually in the Central Valley now of California, which is which is great. Um, we've got people watching from all over the world, from Great Britain, from Gita in, in Denmark, uh, doing her moderating over there. We really appreciate that. So it really is an international group of, um, of beaters here. It's my favorite. And from all, all over the world here, we pull up a chair to our international bead table. And it really is true. I have always said with these broadcasts, I want to make this world a friendlier, smaller, inclusive space all through the medium of beads. That's my goal. Our goal, not just mine, but our goal here when we do these broadcasts. So I got the three in the three. Okay, like this. And I've come around and I'm going to pull it up and I'm going to say, yeah, that that looks about right. So now I have to capture these in. So I, I did my last knot on this left side here. So I'm going to do this knot on my right side on this side, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> you guys, you guys talking about the treasure of Sierra Madre. I, I love it. I don't even, I have to go back and read the comments. I don't even know what's happening here. I love this. So I'm just going to do my, my, let me do that again. Let me slow it down. So I come in and I do my loop. This is the P here, size loop. This strand here coming from the left, I go over that strand that's coming out from that loop, under the center strand, and up through the loop. And it's just like the regular square knot, except I've got beads on here. So I have to wrangle these beads. And sorry if you're hearing a little bit of background noise. Um, the joys of being in a house means that sometimes you have to have a plumber come out to just make sure that everything is working okay. And of course, that said plumber comes out right in the middle of your broadcast. So here is that first loop right here. Okay. 
So I'm going to come in. So that one's tightened. And now I'm going to come in and I'm going to do mine on my left side. And so two of these half hitches combine together to make that square knot. And sometimes you have to push that first one that you did to get kind of push those beads up nice and tight. And then I'll come in and follow it with that second one. See that there? And these A dots, I'm sorry, the, the 11 millimeter, let me try that again. The 10 millimeter English cut, there we go. And these two six millimeter um, fire polish, I think really create a nice negative shape and space. It's a good question. Could you use wax linen for this project? You most definitely could use wax linen. It's going to give it a little bit more of what shall I say, an organic kind of feel to it, but I think it should be okay. Okay, so just experiment with what you like. You know, we were talking when Drea was doing her really beautiful cuff project about kind of practicing, you know, and seeing what, you know, make your little samplers and stuff like that. So um, you don't have to, um, you know, be perfect right out of the gate. Now, I'm going to come in, I'm going to take out one of these, one of these that I just tied. And so I've tied two sets of square knots. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go, I'm going to throw in a little bit of poetry right here, which is our, our bead surrounded, you know, right in the, in the, with the macrame around it, the half hitch macrame. I should have also stiffened these center strands here, but I think I'll be able to get it through. I know that at the office, when I'm next at the office, I need to um, pick up some beading needles. But see, I got it through. I'm the boss of that bead, so I'm not too. I'm not too worried. So here's that one. So I'm going to put that guy in just at the end. Okay, just for fun. I don't know, right? Leslie's asking, what are the biggest size beads you can get away for with for these bracelets? You know, this is a 10 millimeter here, and these are six millimeters. So all the way across, let me show you, Leslie. This connection, this section here is about three quarters of an inch, it looks like right? I think it's going to lay pretty nicely around the wrist. So um, we'll see what happens though. You know, you can't, I'm going to be adventurous. So I tied two here. I'm going to come around and I'm going to tie two below it. Okay. One. So this guy here, one full square knot. So two half hitches makes that one full square knot and then two more half hitches. Okay, here and here. Alfred can't take it. He wants to see those workmen out there, you guys, so badly. He can't even deal. When there's a workman around, he always wants to help. Alfred, you just slow your roll, buddy. Okay, so here's this one. Now, I am ready. Am I beating in the bathroom? Can you hear it? No, they're just on the other side of the wall. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. Oh, well, you guys are just going to have to, I don't know, have to go with it with me on this one. So my next section is going to be this here. Now they're testing the water. Can you hear it? Oh, my goodness. With the drops around. Okay. So I'll try and speak a little louder. So we'll get into the routine. I think Chris scheduled the plumber and was like, yeah, you can come Wednesday morning. Perfect. Just in time for the broadcast. So I'm going to grab an eight ought, a drop, another eight ought, a drop. another eight on a drop 
And you can do any combination, like you could do more A dots, fewer drops, you know, whatever you want this little kind of hump to be, right? This little scallop or whatever. So see how that's going to fit really nicely around that, okay? And yeah, I am lucky. I am lucky to get a plumber. You know, my parents have, my dad's from Fresno, born and raised in Fresno. So, you know, they kind of know who to who to call and I don't know. It's, it's, it's nice. Fresno. I mean, it's a giant city, but it is very much still um, a small town, especially when you have roots here. So it's kind of nice. We'll see what I say, like in the middle of summer when it's like a hundred and, you know, billion degrees here, but right now it's beautiful. So, <laughs> so we'll see. Um, okay. So here, it is different than Bay Area living, though, I'll tell you what. But I'm enjoying it so far, like the two weeks that we've been here. So uh, so here's this, right, right here. And I'm going to come in and around. And, yeah, I live to go, I'm five minutes away from my parents and a little bit further from my uh, brother and sister-in-law and my nieces. And um, we've got all kinds of family here. So um, it's nice. After so many years of living kind of not that close, it's nice to, to be in close proximity. So here, see here? Um, see here how it's kind of kind of nice and tight and pretty and ready to go okay so I'm going to let's see how many I'm gonna do here so that's a nice uh, a section and I'm gonna measure this out so I can start to figure right Emery asks how far am I from our offices and I'm I'm pretty far, not too bad. I'll, I come in and every uh, few weeks I'll be back in the office. So it's kind of a nice, uh, it's a little bit of a, a trip, but um, I'm there. I stay over for several days and, you know, what do I, what do I do? I'll, I'll learn a language. I listen to a lot of podcasts. You know, it's fine. I don't mind driving. I kind of, I kind of like the drive. So let me measure these two components because I like the repetition of these two. I had some other ideas about what I was going to do um, for this one, but I really like the way this looks, right? So let me, let me measure um, these two because my wrist, I'm going for about seven and a quarter finished with this. So this, this is great. This gives me, this is about two inches right here. Okay. So um, two, four, six. So I think what I'm going to do is three of these sections will be like six, six inches. And then I'll end with one of these and and this should be right right so let me just continue uh making this next one here so let's put this guy on how am i doing on time not too bad and then i'm going to show you um how i'm going to incorporate these guys in okay yeah i'm not the only one who did some moving you guys Janice has also uh, moved uh, lately. She's got a lot of changes happening, but of course she has handled it with all of the, you know, stick to that Janice has always had in the many years that I have known her. So um, I'm excited that she's getting settled in as well. So, you know, change, change is good. If you don't have change, then you just get stagnant and stale, right? Gosh, I could really use a, a beading needle. Let me show you, since this is giving me some attitude, right? Let me go ahead and I'm going to do some 
some zap on the end of this. So I'm going to get my, my glue and I'm going to come in, I'm going to hold it kind of close to my face here so I can, I can see where I'm putting it, but I'm going to get my, um, my baggie here and I'm going to get some of my that zap and the zap is as you know a real instant kind of a uh an adhesive so i've got some right here on my baggie can you see that there and i'm going to come in with the end of my thread and just slide that thread right through that little puddle. So it's going to stiffen that up. Okay. And of course I pulled the thread out of my bead. So I'll do the other one too. And this is a real handy trick, especially when you don't have, or you can't locate. I know I have them here somewhere. I just have to get my hands on them. But you know how it is when you move, right? It's going to be chaos around here for the next few months. Um, I'm going to get my end. Here's this end. That one's already glued. Hopefully I don't glue it to the table or to me. And I just put it right there in my little baggie. And I just roll that glue right into it. So it creates a nice stiff needle on the end. Okay, there we go. So, yes, the question is, do I live near Fresno? I live in Fresno, in the actual environs of Fresno itself. So, it's a nice town. Different than San Francisco, but we can always, we can always visit our beloved Bay Area, right? It was time. Time for some, and we have so much room here, so it's great. It's great, great. But we couldn't have done it without everybody at the office and with, you know, family cheering us on and all of that. So we couldn't have done it. And with you guys there and your support. So, so let me get this through here, this through here. And again, you guys can choose your own beads that you like with this project, right? It doesn't have to be these six millimeters. You could use an, um, you know, a larger bead, a smaller bead, whatever works for you. Gosh, this really isn't, I need a little bit better of light here. You know what? I think. Hold that thought. Hold it there. Right? Hold it there. Hold it there. <laughs> I think. Yeah, look at that. You manifest those beading, beading needles. I actually had a project sitting over there and I was like, well, it's pearls, so there must be beading needles with it. So I do have them. Those are the essentials. Let this be a lesson. Always make sure that you've got those essentials. You know, at Bead Shop, we carry all of the, the good, you know, the essentials, your needles, all of that stuff that you need. Um, so stock up on those guys so you always have them. I need to hold it a little closer to my my vision to get it through there. But let's pull that down. And I put one strand at a time through. This is regular Ceylon right here. And Trish is asking what the, how about antique gold colored thread? Sure, I looked at our antique gold Ceylon and I liked it a lot. Um, we had a bunch of the gold. So to be completely frank, I used the gold because we had plenty of it in stock, right? But you can use, like, I also was thinking about using a green. The um, chartreuse, I think, would be really lovely. 
Allie used the chartreuse in her project, so that's why I didn't repeat that one. And I wanted this one to kind of have a monochromatic feeling to it, so that's what I used. Okay, so here are these two. I need to make one more here, and then these will go on. Then, I, after I do this, I'm going to talk about these. Okay, so let me do one more of these sections. And again, of course, you can find all of the ingredients for this project uh, right on our website at beadshop.com. So, uh, and again, there's a, a recipe. You can see the exact ingredients that I used, or you can choose your own adventure, as I like to say with the recipe okay put this last one on now this 10 millimeter that's what's going to go on in the center okay and let me pull up this eight millimeter let me get this um this photo back up see that one that i made so see how the white beads are the um, 10 millimeters and then the purple beads are the um, are the eight millimeter beads you can see that so they kind of go back and forth so you can mix these sizes I'm going to choose the tens for all of these but if you want some kind of a size contrast between the two, like these over here, let me take this down so you can see it. This one over here, that could have been an eight, but I like the way that the tens look all the way through. I'm trying to mix it up so that the next, um, so that each of these projects are just a little bit different. Okay, and so let's do this side over here. So I've got this A dot, this drop, this A dot, this drop, and we've got a huge variety of these drops. So you can use just about anything that works for you. There's that one. Okay, so these guys are there. Let me grab, these would look really nice. The green ones also are new ones. Those would look beautiful in there. All right, and the drop size, I'll tell you, it is from the top to the bottom of the drop is a little larger than nine millimeter. And then that fat part of the drop is like six millimeter. Okay, so I, I love this green. That would really go in nicely with those two. So let's go ahead and put this 10 millimeter English cut. In there. Let me get a nice angle cut. Of course, I had my beading needle and now I am not using it, but. See how I pull that thread down to kind of expose as much of the hole as I can get, and then I can get that through there. There we go. Because you know what I always say, who's the boss of your beads? You are. So I think, so Leslie's asking about the center beads. I These are 10 millimeter. I probably wouldn't go larger than 12, I guess. 12 would be a real statement bracelet, right? Which isn't a bad thing. But I think 12 is probably as far as you want to go. Now, I'm also tying these kind of tightly so that when this isn't supported on the bottom, 
that these sections don't flop around too much, if that makes sense. There we go. That's nice and tight. Whoops, this came out was so tight that the top came out. Let's get that in there. There we go. And around. And I think I did, I don't know, a few of these to clear that space. There we go. And so now I'm going to continue. Oh, you know what I did? I was supposed to do this one. Look at that. Look at, I screwed up my, my pattern. So you know what I'm going to do? This will be the center. I'll do these two. I'm going to do one of these now. It's all right. Easy to switch direction. This one with my eight dots, and then I'll do two more of these and I'll finish with that. That's what we're going to do, right? Who cares, right? Doesn't matter. So I have this piece here and I want to show you how I might use this to make a dangle. Now I could simply just, um, put it on a head pin and wire wrap it, right? And the wire wrapping would be fine and it would look good. But if I don't have a head pin, which I've got some silver ones, but I'd want it to be either the brass or the copper. So what I'm gonna do instead is I've just cut a piece of the Ceylon here. Let me raise this up so you can see a little bit more. This is the regular Ceylon. Of course, I had these beads all nicely laid out. And now I'm just throwing them over. But I'm going to string these eight dots, and I'm going to string seven of them. And I want to see how that looks. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay, now I'm going to bring this back around and I'm going to see what kind of little loop that makes. And that looks like a loop that I like. Okay, so I'm going to come in and I will put these strands through that leaf. Just use your needle, use your tools, okay, you've got them. I'm going to get my beading needle and I'm going to send these strands through one at a time. Now, if you have, see that beading needle, the loop, it's, you can't see it at all. See that loop likes to close up a little bit. So I'll get my awl and I'll get in there with my awl and I'm going to open it up a bit. There we go. So I can get my thread back through there. Okay, so let me get that end, put that back through because these eyes are made to collapse down. So this goes through. And now I'm going to do my other one, my other thread. And I'll go through. And I'll put this one through. Hopefully I can get both strands through. I could do, man, eh, this is a little, let me see if I can pull it with my pliers. Yeah. It just needs a little help coming through there. There we go. Now I'm going to slide this bead up. So can you see, you can also do this with 11 knots, but I think this looks fine. I've got a nice little, um, a nice little loop there. Now, what I can do on this end is I'm just going to tie an overhand knot. Let me, um, let me get my, I have some tweezers here and I'm going to show you this might actually help you um, to tie this knot. We just want to do an overhand. 
So I'm going to create this loop. I'm going to go through. I'm going to take these ends through like so. And then I'll put the tips of my knotting tweezer, one on the outside, one on the inside. Pull that both threads so they tighten up. And then before it's completely tight, I'm going to push that knot up and then I'll split these threads. And I've got that nice little knot there at the bottom. Okay. Then Wesley commented, and it's true uh, here, touch and go when it comes to using pliers to pull through your beads. Broken beads can happen. Uh, that's totally true, which is why um, stiffening those ends with your um, zap glue is always a, a good way to go so you don't have to double up. These, though, I know these beads pretty well. These leaf beads, they're pretty thick um, and they're pretty hardy. So something like a more delicate bead or a delicate semi-precious bead, I don't know, might be a little, um, might be a little more dicey, right? So um, you just wanna make sure that that you're not gonna crack your bead. And so I'll come in and I'll tie a knot there and I'll make this one just slightly longer. Tie this knot, this is just a single overhand. And I'll hold it right there, tighten it up. So that these are gonna hang just a little off kilter here. And then I could add a little bit of glue um, to those or I could thread burn right to the end. So let me just, I've got my thread burner here. So I'm going to put my, my, um, hopefully I have a nice new battery in here, I think. So hopefully everything should work okay. I'm going to come in, heat my thread burner. You can see it's smoking a little bit there. So you want to use this in a well ventilated area because it'll burn off any residue that you might have. So now I've got this cute little dangle that I didn't have um, I didn't have before. Janice is saying, and I thought about doing this. I could put just one thread through the leaf and carry the other thread along the outside. Yeah, it would look nice, right? Um, it would look nice that way too. Because this is a very thread forward project. So having that thread um, run along down the leaf would be completely in um, would be completely in keeping with it. So what I'm going to do with this little guy when it comes when I finish this up right before the loop, I'm just going to slide this sucker right on um, and that's going to be my little dangle. okay so I think it'll look I think it'll look pretty nice. And you can see I didn't make the loop too tight so those beads can kind of loop around like this. Okay. Yeah, the thread burner, uh, Pam was saying that she was on the fence about getting a thread burner. This is the perfect end thread burner that we carry. Um, but it really is a must have tool. That's really, I'm super in agreement. The thing that you want to be careful with. And I want to show you this a little bit of thread burner 101. When you're sometimes what I do is I insert my thread inside the thread burner. And so and then I heat it and I pull the thread burner across the thread to to singe the thread apart. What you don't want to do is pull on this thread or pull the thread burner through before you've heated this sufficiently. If you do, the tip of your thread burner is just going to come out. If it does, just push it back in. This is how you, you can change the heads on these. So if this wire ever breaks, you can get a fresh one. But what you have to do is you have to heat the thread burner and then pull. And you can see here, if you heat then pull, it'll go through. 
And Michelle is saying that you don't want to leave your batteries in. That's for sure. Especially if you're storing it for any length of time. I take the batteries out and this just untwists and you just remove the battery there. But I use it like almost once a week. So it's always, it's usually always in there. So let me go ahead. This is going to be, if this is going to be my center, let's do one more section here of this. And then what I'm going to do for Fridays, uh, for free tip Friday, um, I'm actually traveling this week. You guys, I'm so excited. Um, I uh, am going to our friend, Francesca Watson. Many of you watch Francesca. She's a very accomplished metalsmith. She has a studio in uh, Bull Verde, Texas called The Makery. And you guys know, um, I've been on her broadcast before. She's a great supporter of Bead Shop and what we do here. Um, and um, she's having kind of a, a holiday open house in her studio. But we're also going to be broadcasting. There's going to be a bunch of other metalsmiths. Our buddy Gwen Youngblood from Rolling Mill Resources is going to be there. A lot of really great metalsmiths. My buddy Ani from Jewel Tool is going to be there. So we're going to be doing on Saturday a whole bunch of really fun demos. And so I'm going to um, go ahead and uh, broadcast that onto our Bead Shop YouTube channel because then it'll live over there in perpetuity. So you'll see me uh, wielding some, some metal. I'm doing the, me the marriage of metal and pearls. And if you tune in, uh, we have a, a special code that we're sharing. I'll share it on social a little bit later. On Beach Shop. Maybe I should actually tell you that today. Should I tell them, Janice? It's it's active. Um, it's Makery 20, and it'll save you 20% off of your total here at Bead Shop. And that's valid through Sunday night at midnight Pacific time. Makery 20. Why not? I like those little surprises. But I'm I'm excited to travel. I'm excited to can you tell I'm so excited that I can't keep this thread in the needle. Um, I'm excited to be wielding a torch again with uh, some metalsmith friends. And of course, I'm excited to marry beads and metal together in my demos. We're going to be talking pearl knotting, a lot of pearl knotting and stuff. So it'll be good times. Good times had by all. So let's go ahead to see here how this, I feel like this is a little, well, it's not too close. I guess we're fine. I'm not going to, I need to be consistent. So I'm going to do that. So we're going to go one, two, and three, and then the six mil, and then one two and three and we'll do this other side now since this is the center though i said i was going to repeat this and i'm i'm happy with repeating it i think does that feel close let me see it feels a little close so you know what i'm going to do i'm going to tie one more not there. It needs, like Janice always says, it needs a little bit of air. I feel like this isn't quite the right spacing. See how I didn't even take those beads off? I just sent them through. There we go. That's going to make the whole difference. Now these beads are over on this side. Yep, that's right. Isn't it funny how one little knot, right? Oh, Shirley, you're the best. 
there is supposed to be a fire polish. I think I'll put a fire polish. Let me measure what this is going to be. Live broadcasts are not for the faint of heart. Yeah, three plus, if I add a fire polish, you know, to be honest, I think if I add a fire polish right here, right next to this one, I think it's going to end up being a little too long because this, where this ends, um, well, maybe not if it ends up about right there. I think it's going to end up being a little bit too long. So I'm going to say that I'm going to keep these fire polish here. This will be my center because I still have, see on this closure right here. Uh, let me show you. See how I've closed it. Can you see how these two rollers are here at the end? So I need to take into account the length that these two rollers are going to add. So um, let me show you here. Let me get my two rollers. I had my two rollers. Anybody see them sitting on the table? Oh, no. Well, I know they're here somewhere because I showed you one of them. Here's one. I know I have a second one here somewhere. But these are width-wise. It's five millimeters. So if I do two of those, it's going to be almost, almost half an inch, really, with these two. Okay? So I'm going to... Um, I could just use one roller, Kim, but when I tie the knot, the knot actually comes in between the two, and I liked how that finishes, but I could just use the one. I'm going to have to see anyway when I, um, when I close it off, but I'm going to go ahead, and as long as this is symmetrical, I'm not too worried about those six millimeters just being in those two spots so let me do that you put this on but great catch everyone thanks for having my back it means that you actually are paying attention to what i'm making isn't that good plus i need a little bit of space at the end to attach all of these dangles and stuff as well okay so anyway i know i'm going rogue i you know What's, it's not, I'm, I like just that creative flow. I'm in my creative flow space right here. Yeah, that looks good. So let's go ahead and tie this down. Let me make this nice and taut so I get a nice clean knot here. This here. Plus I've gotten used to the spacing of my camera and stuff, so I'm feeling pretty good. I'm feeling pretty good where I'm at. And that space there is good. Alfred has moved along, so he's no longer fussing. The plumber has gone, so there's no more plumber noise. We've settled in. So tighten in, tighten that top one, kind of put your finger on there, and then tighten that one right below it. And that'll make everything kind of, kind of tight. There we go. And I'm going to add that other section there. Like so. Does that look even? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I need my pointer to count. One, two, three, four, five. One, two. Four, yep, I need one more, five. And I was counting the little scallops here to make sure that I had an equal amount on both sides. Right, I should, I should um, call it Treasure of the Sierra Madre. So let me measure this now, now that I'm halfway through, okay? 
This is one, two, three inches. Six, I have about an inch and a half, right? So this is my center. And I'm trying to decide. I mean, I'm going to finish it on Friday, so I'm not too worried about this. Six. That's going to give me maybe even if I do two of those, one of these, the loop. Yeah, I'm going to throw caution to the wind. I'm going to make this a section here. I know that some of you are like, put in that six mil, but I'm going to keep going. I can always take it out if I don't love it. You'll see what happens on Friday when I finish it on free tip. So you'll just have to stay tuned and see it'll be like the cliffhanger, you know, like with those daytime cereals, right? The old fashioned ones. Will so-and-so, I don't know, whatever they would say, but it's like the cliffhanger. But I'm just going to put in this other one and I'm going to see what it looks like. And then I will actually stop. I'll stop right there. Yeah, I'm just going to flip the pattern. Exactly. Janice does this all the time. I'm going to flip the pattern. So now I'm going to do this pattern over here on this side. And it's also, you know, you're kind of actively always in the back of your mind. You're thinking about the length of your piece as well. And you've got some wiggle room because at that end, I'm going to add the rollers. I can either lengthen or shorten it a little bit at the loop. And I'm going to add these dangles too. So that's going to take up a little bit of, of space, right? So here, I'll come in. So that this grouping looks a little more like a grouping without that six mil. And I'm really okay with it. So let's come in and use these eight aughts. And I wasn't sure, you know, to be honest, when I brought, I hardly even looked at these beads to really be quite frank. Um, until I started, uh, you know, I Dre and I picked them and I'm all, yep, perfect. That looks great. I kind of had them laid out at the office and then I brought them home and I was like, oh, I don't know if I like this monochromatic palette as much as I thought I did. But seeing it all laid out and the subtleties of all of these different amber colors, and it's kind of hard to see on the camera, but this green um, really does a lot for me to kind of bring out the colors. You don't always have to have such um, saturated, um, what do I want to say, colors that have a lot of contrast to them. Sometimes a monochromatic palette with, with some interesting twists in it is exactly what you need. Sorry, I'm holding these a little closer. I know I'm out of frame to string these on. I'm holding them a little closer to my eyes so I can see them. The hole in this drop is fairly generous. If I were to wire wrap this, I'd probably use a 24 gauge to wire wrap it. But it's a nice generous hole and it's kind of further down from the tip. So you don't have to worry about splitting these beads open. Okay, so here's that. Pull them up. And let's tie that, let's tie them in there. Tighten this down. And there we go. This one always, it gives you a little bit of sass, like I was saying. You've got to just kind of push it in there, get your finger in there, right? And then kind of tie your second knot then come in, cinch up that first knot to where you want it. I kind of put my finger up there and then I quickly tie that second knot in so it's nice and tight. 
Yeah, I I agree with you, Wesley. I like the subtlety of of shade, which is a really great way of putting this, instead of a stark contrast. And I, um, that's why I think paletting and playing around with your beads. Like here's some of the new uh, check that we got. So this green, I think, what this whole palette that I chose for these new check. I think it does have a subtlety to it. There's like this big A dot that's, you know, that's a, a lot of contrast. But these other kind of muted colors, I feel like really have kind of a subtle contrast to them. And even with this A dot, this really nice English cut that's here. So I think that works. But what Cynthia is also saying, I think it would look great. You would put oxblood or garnet. Rust would look great. By simply changing out this Ceylon that I'm using here, you can really move your colors around. I would also, I am a big fan, and if you know kind of my work that I do, I would put a Montana blue. I'd put a blue with these ambers because I love amber and Montana. So now it's time to do a few more of these square knots. So this is kind of, you know, flanking. And this is what's going to be on top of your wrist anyway. So when you think about a bracelet, well, let me tie these last few and then I'll show you. A bracelet is a lot different than a necklace. So if this was a necklace, I would probably want to space these out because the spacing might look a little weird. But for a bracelet, you need to think about what's going to sit at the top of your wrist or on the front of your wrist, right? So um, we don't want it to be too spaced too far or else here you're going to, your flower motifs here and here, they're going to lay kind of on the side of your wrist and it's going to be kind of funny. Okay. So let me put this here. And so see how this, yeah, that fits perfectly at the top, right here. And we will. I just made a huge check glass order yesterday, Judy, you're asking. I made a huge check glass order. So they're coming in, you know, with the pandemic, of course, we have, uh, there's always supply chain issues, but we've got some new ones, new ones coming. Okay. Amy is also asking, is there a multi-pack of the Ceylon or a sample pack? There's not actually. Um, they used to carry them in smaller amounts, and sometimes we used to sample them that way, but our supplier doesn't do that any longer, unfortunately. I'm sorry. But you know what I do, um, and one of those times, um, I'll have to show you how I choose beads, how I palette beads on the computer. I'll take a bunch of screenshots, so you can put screenshots and put them into whatever your Word program is or whatever, and I'll play around with my palette that way. Um, so sometimes that helps with color if you're trying to decide what you're going to use. But I think this looks pretty good, right? So I'm going to finish this motif. I'm going to put that six millimeter there, put this one here, and put finish up with that one. I'm going to add these little closures. So what you're going to see uh, from me on free tip, let me uh, let me get let me get myself in here. Here I am. Uh, so for free tip Friday, I'm going to show you how I measure for the button loop because I want to take my time on this. I don't want to rush, and I, I want to finish this off. So um, and I'm going to add these dangles on here. OK, so I think uh, I think it's going to be nice. And again, something like this, when you're kind of making it up on the fly, really, I mean, you have your your pattern, your design in your head. But as you're doing this, this is an active kind of a design, you know, not you're not being passive with this. You're thinking about this the whole time. Right. So you really have to come in and um, check and see how it fits. This is perfect. Right. So I'm just going to continue on here and I'll add that length and I'll show you how how we do the closure. OK, so that's that's my story. I'm sticking to it. Here we are. 
So uh, let me uh, just solo this one more time so you guys can see that up close. And so on Friday, we'll go ahead, and I love the way this button looks. I'll go ahead and I'll add that dangle. I'll do the loop. I'll show you how to knot it off with the um, roller beads. And then this piece will be complete. Okay. So let me get myself here over and let me get rid of this camera here. Move that over. All right. There we are. Okay, so I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this little extravaganza today. Uh, as I said, I'm going to be broadcasting on the Bead Shop YouTube channel uh, this Saturday um, when I'm in Bolveri, Texas. Our buddy Francesca's at the Makery. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, you'll see a lot of metal content, but I'm going to talk about um, mixing pearl knotting with metal. It's going to be fun. Um, and I'll go ahead. Let me make a little bit of a banner. I turned the... Um, we have a, a discount code that I'm putting out this weekend, but I'll show you guys. It's Makery 20. And uh, if you use that, you can knock 20% off the entire contents of your cart here at beadshop.com. Um, that's valid through Sunday. Let me make sure I get the date on Sunday right. Pull up this calendar. Uh, Sunday. November 21st at midnight Pacific time. Okay, so I've turned that on. There it is. It's right over there. I turned it on a little bit early to sneak that in. So I hope no one's mad at me for doing that. Um, but I will see you uh, on Saturday if you jump in. And I will on Friday, you guys, for Free Tip Friday, we're going to finish this sucker up. I'm actually going to have a pre recorded. Um, uh, broadcast for you guys because you know what I did last time when I was in a remote location. I didn't have a lot of great um, connectivity. So I'm actually going to do this right after this broadcast, film the free tip Friday and put it up so you guys can see that and see how um, my adventure on closing this. So I hope it's Makery 20. Let me put that uh, back up there. Makery um, because Francesca's uh, wonderful uh, place is called the Makery. So it's Makery 20 um, in honor of that. Okay. Um, so yeah, so see, you can see, yes, you can see my quilt. That is a, a pattern that my buddy Janet Losey made for um, that fabric company, uh, Chickens Playing Tic-Tac-Toe. Um, yes, you can see my spinning wheel over there on the side, right? Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's cozy here in my, in my, uh, if you like my tree trunk desk, yes, I was doing my, my work right on a tree trunk, right? You can't, uh, you make your studio space wherever it is that you land. Okay. So again, thank you guys so, so much for watching and uh, sharing with me today. Uh, I'll see you for free tip Friday when we finish this little extravaganza of a bracelet. And if you tune in, uh, stay tuned to social. I will uh, post the times, um, but go ahead and uh, follow us over. If you give um our social media a follow, especially if you like and subscribe at beadshop.com on our YouTube channel. I would love to get some more subscriptions on that YouTube channel. Channel. We are so close to the 100,000 um, followers. I'd love 100,000 on there. So if you like and subscribe, and you'll get notifications when I go live over there on YouTube. So thank you guys so, so very, very much. Um, I, I will check in, let you know how, uh, how this traveling is going. I've got my booster, so I feel great about that. No after effects. It was super easy. So make sure you guys were still, you know, trying to stay as safe as we can. So on my trip, I'm going to be masked. I'm going to wear those, you know, get that hand sanitizer out and be super, super safe with me and my booster. Um, so 
I will see you Friday for Free Tip Friday. See you this weekend from my uh, adventures uh, in beating and metal. And then I'll be back next week live for you guys on Wednesday. From here, again, um, the day before American Thanksgiving, I have a lariat project for you. I've got the beads sitting right over there. Um, and I think you guys are really going to love this. We haven't done a lariat in a while. And I always feel like a lariat is a great project for the holidays because you can gift it. People can, it doesn't matter if they like long necklaces or short necklaces. Lariats are super, super easy and fun to wear. So that's it for me. I'll see you guys soon. Thank you so much, as always, you guys, for your support. Um, without you, we would not be here at beadshop.com being able to do what we love. So thank you so much for watching. You can find all of the information on the project and the products from today's broadcast on our website. Sign up for our newsletter, of course, for all the latest discounts, giveaways, and new products. And I will see you all soon. So that's it for me from my remote location. And I'll see you guys soon. Thanks so much, everybody. Bye-bye.